headline inflation 22.22 percent in april uh from 22.04 uh in march uh bureau of statistics of course releasing those numbers. We're going to get into that now with Ibuku Omoyeni, who is a sub-Saharan uh, economist, Afri sub-Saharan Africa economist with Vetiva Capital Management. Ibuku, you're very welcome. Good morning to you. Um, we seem to be setting records with every new inflation print coming out of Nigeria this year on year. What do you make of these, of these figures? I think the numbers we are seeing is as a result of the um, lingering pressures from forced shortages um, and also the cash crunch. Yeah. So you recall that the cash crunch um, affected prices for whole of Q1. And you know, agricultural sector is one sector that depends a lot on cash. The cash based economy, right? So um, the impact of that shock on the sector has, has not dissipated. So that's why we are seeing higher um, month on month and year on year inflation. See, food inflation is at above 2% month on month. That's significant. Right. And that means that in one year, that's an analysis in 4%. So it's, it's, it's very. We're in a very precarious situation right now, and I think more needs to be done to curb food inflation. Mm. Because food, we already had um, some existing challenges like insecurity, um, market fires across major, some major key markets in the northern region. Yeah. We had a conflict, north central, north east, north west. And this conflict combined with the cash shortage, um, and of course, you know that in the month of April, we had Ramadan, we had the um, Easter, yeah. and that, that demand pressure, probably the supply um, crunch, mm. led to, of course, higher inflation numbers. I want to ask you about this table from the Bureau of Statistics with regards to contribution from each sector, uh, or rather each, me each metric or each uh, that's used uh, in the basket. Um, so food and non-alcoholic beverages, that's contribution year on year, 11.5%. You've got housing, water, electricity at 3.72. I want to ask you about transportation at 1.45. Help me out here. Most, the average Nigerian spends most of their money on food and transportation. Should, um, help us out. Shouldn't transportation be contributing more year on year? What's, what's your take on the table? So, um, like this, this series is based on 2009 series. Mm. And we saw a, a survey, Canada 2020, consumption report survey, yeah. upon which the new CPI series will be based on. So um, food, of course, is about 50% of um, an average Nigerian's uh, consumption basket. Yeah. But again, if you look at fuel, fuel does not just affect transport alone. It affects several segments of the, of the consumption basket. So that you will right. see that, even though you are seeing transport, right? I think we should, we should get a unique measurement for fuel inflation, right. just like South Africa does. And right. if we have that measure, it will help to narrow down the focus to see what is fuel inflation, what is non-fuel inflation, right? Um, but again, what we have is we have um, cough inflation, we have food inflation. We, we, we don't really place much um, emphasis on the energy inflation, which is major driver of most of the inflation that we've seen recently. Aha, so the basket will be rejected, ba ba yes, basically. Definitely. Perfect. You mentioned core inflation. We look at those numbers again year on year. Core inflation breaching 20% uh, year on year. Yeah, 20.14. What's, what's the takeaway from that, uh, Ibukun? Uh, that's massive yeah. because last time we saw this kind of number was in 2004. Yeah. And it's 2023. That's over yeah, 18, well, years, 18 years. Over 18 yeah, years. Yeah. And of course, it's just giving us the feedback from the cash crunch and higher fuel prices. So he's saying that beyond food, beyond energy, other commodities are facing um, some severe price increases. And of course, you can look at exchange rates, but yeah. I think most especially the energy, the energy sector is one of the key terms of that inflation. Yeah. And funny enough, if you look at other African countries that are oil produced, like Angola, yeah. Angola's inflation has been falling steadily since the inflation of uh, the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Amazing. And now it's around 11%. Yeah. So um, Nigeria has not made good use of its oil rally last year. And now that we are having these issues now, we are seeing higher month month inflation, fall shortages and all that. So the, although now it has eased a bit, it has eased up, but the impact is still there combined with the um, cash shortage. So I think that's the major um, job from the core inflation figures. You see, thanks for mentioning Angola, because, I mean, you cover these African nations, part of your coverage. They are, they are they, you see the kwacha? I mean, it's strengthened, kwacha. right? So while right, right, oil prices are rising, they were able, anyway. So basically, they did, they did well. They did better than, yeah. than Nigeria did. Yes. All right. Um, you, I think you mentioned month-on-month -month inflation. We take a look at that. What, what do you make of this big jump within such a small period of time? Headline from... Uh, 1.986 to 1.9 for, for month on month inflation. So it just means that there are more pressures, right? Because mm. month on month is more reflective than the year on year figure. 
year on year can fall because of base effects, but month on month it shows you that something's actually going on with inflation. Yeah. And I think most of the higher most of the numbers we are seeing right now is due to the festive season. That's the demand side and yeah. the supply crunch. So you're having increased demand, you're having lower supply. Yeah. And that impact is what you are seeing at 1.91. Um, you can see food inflation at 2.13. 2 exactly. It's, it's very significant. Yeah, 2% yeah. inflation of food. Okay, speaking of food, uh, there were some observations. Thank you. You've mentioned the supply side, right? There were some observations that were made at the last MPC meeting. I want to ask you about MPC, but before we get to that, so the, the observations on food supply shocks that were made by the central bank governor, Godwin Mefele, he mentioned, in, there it is, increase in road transportation costs, security issues in food producing areas, legacy infrastructure challenges. Is this not to be addressed by the uh, fiscal side? What, what, what do you exactly. make of this, these shocks? Exactly. These are fiscal-related issues. Mm. And that's why um, if, you, if you increase interest rates by 1,000 basis points, it's, yeah. it's having an impact on inflation. Yeah. So um, most of these um, issues have to be solved. Yeah. But unfortunately, we don't expect a quick fix mm. because some key measures have to be taken, especially this year, subsidy removal and all that, which would ensure fiscal sustainability. Yeah. But we don't think inflation will come down anytime soon, given the um, current trajectory. Um, however, of course, we're still, look, we're still looking towards um, subsidy removal. I was which about is, to ask you. Which is... That's a big shock, right? Which is, at this point, is necessary. At this point, it's compulsory. Right. We can't afford to um, keep paying for subsidies. But, but if you remove subsidies, that you've mentioned how fuel has these multiple impacts on different sectors. That is going to... Is that not going to take the numbers up? Well, um, if, if, you, if you don't remove it now, you postpone the bad day. Then right? you're still in that Postpone the bad day. All right, so, uh, yeah. let's, okay, I want to pick your brain on this. Chef Hilda, uh, who broke the record for continuous cooking for 100 hours uh, straight. I got to ask you this. The, and just, and you're for, us in this, <laughs> for us that look at costs, what, can, can, you, can you try to put a... What do you make of the cost of what of this of of, of with food inflation at twenty four point five percent? And I understand that some of these uh, she got sponsorships and so on, but there's still a there's still a cost for sponsorship. How much? What kind of cost do you think went, went into continuous cooking for hundred hours? Uh, with where food prices are now? Well, yeah, well, there are sponsors to to build the cost. Yeah, but I think we can we can look at the Jollof index by SBM Intelligence. Yeah, and it just showed you that the price of making Jollof rice has gone up. Right. Really. So that's that's the summary of. That's the closest um, measure of food, right. of food yeah. in Nigeria. So we think, of course, it's, it's, this is a very good record. This, this is Nigeria on a global scale for good news once again. Yeah. Um, but looking at jollof rice and other food items in yeah. Nigeria, yeah. things have gone up. It's so gone, everything's going up. Everything has gone up. I have to ask you about investments. Um, the real rate of return with respect to, because we talked about food, households, and what it means, but then what about, because I think we have an example with the 364-day the T -T bill. So what, 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 I mean, you're an economist, so you're looking at macro stuff, so you know, I know you're a you know, financial analyst, but still, can you just share your thoughts on what, what this means for, the, for investments in Nigeria? So usually in high um, inflationary environment, you have to um, do two things. Number one, you have to spend, you have to make, you have to ensure you don't delay your purchases, right? Yeah. And when it comes to investment, you can see the one-year T-bill is not attractive relative to the inflation rate. Right. And that's when you want to look at more riskier investment, probably stocks, real estate, um, commodities. Um, and of course, those ones, they carry their level of risk. So mm -hmm. for investors, I think you just have to find a way to balance your portfolio, have some equities, have some fixed income yeah. for stability, have some equities, probably some dividend yield, yield stocks. Some stocks are beating inflation this year. Mm. Despite the um, whole wave, you can position ahead of key macroeconomic um, releases, subsidy removal, positive for the oil and gas sector, right. even though it's negative for consumers in terms of inflation. So yeah. um, when you have, of course, we'll see the refineries who come on, on board. Mm. And when you have the refinery, when you have downstream players um, invest and there's no longer subsidy, that would boost production um, and improve employment over the medium term. Yeah. So, but for investments, we think um, it takes much more than interest rates to steer investment. And I think that fiscal um, framework has to be um, set in stone in order to um, mobilize direct investment, not just portfolio investment, yeah. which is treasuries and the likes. Right. When you see more direct investment in the economy, mm. and that's where we can bring down inflation sustainably. Lots of challenges for the new administration. Lots, lots, lots. Um, what does the MPC do next at the next 
monetary policy. I mean, they've been hiking since April or March of last year. Now it's you know six hundred and fifty basis points cumulatively. So what what what's their what do they do? So at the next meeting, more rate hikes. <laughs> more rate hikes. More rate hikes. So although it's not going to have an impact immediately, but we we'll expect more rate hikes in the year. So yeah, yeah, so that's the last one. 50 basis points or 17.5 to uh, to 18. Um, okay, you know what? Let's move away from Nigeria. Very quickly, I want to get your thoughts on Kenya and Mr. Uh, uh, Thuge, who has been um, nominated by the uh, uh, President Ruto to take over the um, Central Bank of Kenya. What, what do you make of this choice? I think it's a great one, yeah. given the fact that he's a career economist. He's had his stint at the IMF mm. and... You would not be it. You you will not be new to the challenges facing emerging markets. So mm. I think it's a great one. It's going to provide, um, steer the ba central bank in the right direction and ensure that they navigate um, this current path. Any, yeah. I mean, he's presently an advisor of the president. So any issues with picking somebody from your inner circle as opposed to picking somebody com completely outside your circle who you know with talk of independence of the central bank and you don't see any issues any issues there. Or? I I think for him to have worked in the IMF mm. um, and him. Being, brought into the central bank government. That's enough to at least trust the decision. Yeah. Um, but further down the line, we would observe his decisions and see how they well align with central bank independence. Yeah, so, yeah. Interesting uh, times ahead for Kenya. Interesting times ahead for Nigeria. Ibuko Moyeni, it's always a pleasure having you as uh, Sub-Saharan African economist with uh, Vetiva Capital Management to have you break down these things with us. Thank you so much. Lots to look forward to uh, this year. Appreciate your time. Mm -hmm.